I've been meaning to make this video for a long time, so let's begin. All orchid lovers, sooner or later, is going to wonder if it's possible to somehow propagate orchids at home. How do you get another copy of your favorite orchid from your home collection? Like many plants, orchids can be propagated vegetatively, and this is very easy to do at home. Monopodial orchids, such as Phalaenopsis, can be propagated simply by dividing the stem, cutting it into two separate plants. On our channel, there are two videos with detailed instructions and subsequent results for propagating an orchid this way. The link will be in the description. Sympodial orchids, such as Dendrobium, can be easily propagated by separating the leafy pseudobulbs from the mother plant. But sometimes all orchids may start to grow a young keiki plant. Keiki is a Hawaiian word meaning child or infant. What causes orchids to start producing tiny copies of themselves on the flower stalk or at the bottom of the stem is still poorly understood, and this fact makes this process most intriguing. Are there any means to stimulate such growth? And so I decided to look on YouTube and just on the internet, and I was shocked by how many new methods were proposed. Previously, I had only heard about cytokinine cakey paste, which gives very questionable results. And here, look, almost everything you have in your kitchen can be used as a growth stimulator for orchid cakey, from a variety of spices to banana peels. I chose one method for myself and decided to repeat everything step by step. I cut off a healthy part of the orchid's peduncle with a developed flower bud. Then I prepared garlic water, as shown in the video. I soaked the orchid flower stalk in the garlic water for the recommended amount of time. Then I dried it and I sealed the ends with wax. Then I cut out a small piece of floral oasis sponge and placed it on the bottom of the glass jar. I soaked it with water and I inserted the flower stalk as shown in the video. I covered the glass jar with a perforated plastic container and I placed it on a windowsill with a warm temperature and plenty of sunlight. Just a couple of weeks later, I noticed that the orchid's peduncle had turned yellow and the epithelial layer of the stem began to peel off due to rotting. I see no point in continuing this experiment. I am sure that the peduncle had already died. It was obvious that this method failed. In the jar, there were septic conditions, which in a warm and humid environment ensures the growth of pathogens and mold, and the substrate that should provide a biological balance to suppress pathogenic microflora was absent, and together with the substrate, there was no source of nutrients that were so necessary for the flower stalk. I deeply doubt that this process of vegetative cloning can begin under such unnatural conditions. But how are these creators managing to deceive us, showing us such amazing growth results of such young orchids? And so I took my super glue, but I don't really want to tear my young cakey orchid from the mother plant and glue it onto a peduncle to create a fake video. It takes a lot of time for such a young orchid to grow and develop. Therefore, I'm abandoning this idea and I'm going to begin to carefully analyze these fake videos over and over again. So I think I finally figured out how they do it. I don't think the creators of this hoax take baby orchids from other orchids. First of all, even if one has a lot of orchids in, say, a flower shop or a garden center, the development of keiki is a unique and spontaneous phenomenon. It would be a huge waste for any orchid grower to destroy a baby orchid just to make one fake video. There is only one way to produce such similar videos in such a short period of time, and this is replacement. Many of these counterfeits, as I understand it, are produced in countries with warm climates and an abundance of tropical plants available year-round. There are many tropical foliage that can be used to imitate a young orchid on a flower stalk. For this purpose, you can use the leaves of green tradescantia. Unfortunately, I only found variegated varieties, so I use leaves of goldfish nematanthus plant to imitate smaller keiki, and Madagascar jasmine or stephanotis leaves to imitate older baby orchids. For example, this is what I got. How does it look? I didn't even try too hard to make it look real. Fascinating, isn't it? I understand perfectly well how difficult it is to distinguish a true video from a fake video, especially now with Photoshop, AI-generated images, silicone artificial flowers that are all widely available to everybody. The entire internet is filled with these kinds of videos. I don't understand why people do this. Is it just to get more clicks, generate profit, or are there other goals being pursued here? But there is only one way to distinguish truth from deception. Understanding the biological mechanisms that occur with orchids during vegetative propagation. If you are a person who not only absorbs what is shown on the internet, but a person who themselves is trying to learn about the natural features of growing orchids, then no one will ever be able to deceive you. 
Yes, the orchid actually produces cakey clones on peduncles from nodal buds because there are meristem cells from which flowers normally always develop. But under certain conditions, a baby orchid suddenly begins to grow spontaneously. This is a natural mechanism for vegetative propagation of orchids. In nature, orchid flower stalks can break and fall from the tree into a substrate or moss, and under favorable conditions, they can give rise to a new plant. If spontaneity is possible in nature, then we can try to stimulate natural conditions and try to forcefully multiply orchids at home or in the laboratory. Here is a snippet from a scientific article written by a scientist from the University of California that I recommend everyone read. The link is in the description. It reads, quote, about 120 years ago, British orchid growers placed Phalaenopsis flower stock nodes in peat and produced plantlets from their buds. This method of propagating Phalaenopsis is a prehistoric, simple, or crude form of micropropagation because the explant, a bud or a stock section, was taken from a mature plant, placed in or on a medium, could be moss, albeit non-sterile, and cultured until it produced a plantlet or died. The method provided a means of mass rapid propagation for Phalaenopsis and also showed that Theodore Schwann was right in suggesting in 1939 that isolated buds can be separated from the plant and continue to grow. End quote. I didn't even know about this fact when six years ago I successfully raised orchid babies using a similar method. In my experiment, I used several orchid peduncles, about 35 to 40 centimeters long. Each peduncle had several developed buds. I used living green sphagnum moss as a substrate. Living moss, being in a closed ecosystem, continued to grow safely, providing the orchid flower spike with clean water with many types of beneficial symbiotic microorganisms. Mosses are known for their ability to suppress putrefactive processes, and therefore, by creating such an ecological balance, I was able to obtain conditions very close to natural conditions and get amazing results. I was delighted with what happened and posted a video on my channel. The link will be in the description. It's called How to Make 100 Orchids from One Without Cakey Paste. Now I'm absolutely sure that the key to success for my experiment was solely due to the use of living green sphagnum moss. It was this that helped me to get as close as possible to the natural environment. I have been growing various types of mosses in my home for several years now in terrariums or glass vases, and the moss helps create a balanced ecosystem in these environments by providing healthy beneficial microorganisms. That's why I know that many videos on propagating orchids from flower stalks on YouTube are fake. And I'll explain why. First, the timing is wrong. The entire process from beginning to the moment when the baby orchid can be placed in an individual pot usually takes up to 10 to 12 weeks or even more, not three to five weeks, as most of these creators in these dubious videos claim. Believe me, it is impossible for a new cakey orchid to grow in 30 to 40 days. Secondly, a single short peduncle with one or two flower buds in septic unnatural conditions without any substrate with beneficial microbiota that must resist and balance pathogenic microorganisms results in a complete lack of any nutrients. I assure you that the probability of cloning here is close to zero. Dear bloggers, educate yourself or be at least a little bit more creative. Thirdly, this is 100% fake, especially when you see how they glue several baby orchids in one place. It is reliably known that the photosynthetic peduncle is capable of storing and reserving sugar, even in cut forms, but it will be enough to grow only one cakey, one per peduncle and nothing more. And of course, in conditions as close to natural as possible. Fourthly, no dead substrates such as bark or old dead moss are suitable for this purpose, for the simple reason that putrefactive processes associated with decomposition will prevail and spread to that peduncle. But how do you think the orchid industry, whose turnover is approaching a billion dollars, can today satisfy the growing demand of the world market? Using garlic or potatoes? No. For many people, this remains a big mystery. You should know that for most varieties of modern orchids, they are highly hybridized, genetically modified, patented, and therefore cannot be propagated by seeds. There is a video on our channel explaining how polyploidy and gene mutations can affect the health of modern orchids. The link is in the description. Now please pay attention, because of what I'm about to reveal to you will completely confirm everything that I have said. At the beginning of the last century, one brilliant professor of botany, Noel Bernard, 
foreseeing the future and did predict, quote, that a time would come when orchid gardens will include laboratories, end quote. This scientific work contains the story of how hundreds of scientists around the world have worked for centuries on effective methods of propagating these beautiful flowers. Quote, in 1949, Doctor of Botanical Sciences Gavina Roeder is the inventor not only of orchid micropropagation, but also of mass rapid clonal propagation of plants in vitro. End quote. In the laboratory under sterile conditions, orchid growers place flower nodes with buds on a nutrient medium containing about 50 components, including salts, microelements, amino acids, vitamins, phytohormones, enriched with coconut water, yeasts, and extracts of other plants. This is then placed in an incubator under controlled conditions of temperature, pressure, and humidity for an average of 8 to 10 weeks. The waste level is about 30%. X plants of cultivated orchids die due to browning. This is an oxidation process caused by polyphenol oxidase, or PPO for short. This process is very difficult to control, and many researchers are still working on this issue. This is how orchids are grown commercially around the world until the early 21st century. To meet growing market demands and reduce costs, orchid propagation is now done by stimulating the growth of PLBs, or protocorm-like bodies, from meristem cells found in the apical meristem of orchids, apical meristem of roots, meristem cells of primordial and young leaves, and of course, meristem cells of flower stalk nodes. By dividing one group of cells into several groups in vitro, producers can now grow not just one orchid from one bud, for example, but many, stimulating in vitro the development of protochorm-like bodies or somatic embryos, which as they develop, will then become baby orchids. I hope you understand now how this process is labor-intensive, energy-consuming, and very complex, and it's far from simply sticking an orchid flower spike into aloe, potatoes, tomatoes, bananas, and other so-called miracle cures used by cunning crooks for supposedly propagating orchids. As a result of all these manipulations, only one thing can happen. Browning, rotting, and nothing more. If you see videos like these, Avoid them. Thank you so much for watching.